Hello and welcome to On Call with the Prairie Doc After Hours. We had some great questions submitted that were beyond what we could answer during the show, so let's get to them right now. One was about fibrocystic breast disease, um, and I listed it as a risk factor primarily because it keeps us from being able to pick it up on mammogram. Isn't that right? Am I right on that? Well, fibrocystic breast changes. We don't call it a disease anymore. They're okay. changes. Um, it's lumpy bumpies in your breast, and typically they're in the upper outer breast. Now, when a woman has really nodular, lumpy breasts, it makes it very challenging to be able to feel those breasts and feel confident that there isn't a cancer in right. there. So, and then typically those women also have very dense breasts. And that means when you do a mammogram, <laughs> Mammograms are, are x-rays through the tissue, and when you mammogram through fatty tissue, it's supposed to be gray. But glandular tissue or fibrocystic tissue tends to be white. Cancer is also white. So when you have white on white, you don't know whether or not that There's tissue some is cancer exactly. In there. So what we do for those women who are very dense or who have issues and we're just not sure what to do with the mammograms, you can do an MRI, which they lie flat and with their breast down into a coil, and they do the MRI, and that's about an hour's worth of time. Um, but now we have a thing called contrast-enhanced spectral mammography. What we do is we inject that woman with a contrast dye, and then we do a mammogram. And only the tissue that has increased blood supply, like a cancer, is going to show up on the mammogram as a white spot. Everything else is gray. Oh. And so it tells us that that breast blood tissue, flow to the yes. Cancer, that's so it. the breast tissue that's normal maintains a normal gray appearance. Even though it was glandular and white and dense, mm -hmm. now we're seeing all gray. And if we see any white spots or any white blobs, we know we have to target those and biopsy those. Okay. Now, Speaking of hard to diagnose, uh, I know that one out of every 100 cancers of the breast is in a man. Correct. Uh, so my question... No, one out of every... One out of 1% 1 of men will get breast cancer. Oh, okay. So the question I would have is mammogram in men? If they have a palpable mass or something that you can feel. Now, for men who are in a family that is genetic, has a BRCA1 or BRCA2 deficiency, they are at higher risk for getting breast cancer, and I've definitely seen that. But if a male comes in with a breast lump, that needs to be mm -hmm. evaluated. And one of the things we can do is a mammogram. Okay, so BRCA meaning BR, breast, BR, B CA, cancer. So breast Correct. cancer gene 1 and breast, breast cancer, cancer gene, gene two. 2. And they're just two different kinds of genetic abnormalities Correct. that carry with it risk of cancer of the breast. Yes. So the question I have is, so how do I know I'm a BRCA1 or BRCA2? And generally, that's done because somebody had cancer breast of the cancer. breast. So it's women under the age of four, 45 who have multiple family members with breast cancer or ovarian cancer. Okay. And so when we get those, then we have a geneticist that will counsel them as to their options for testing. So when uh, you do the test, it's an expensive test. Yes, $3,000 worth. So what, this is how I explain it. They're genetic mutations that are part of the surveillance system that fixes our damaged cells. If the damaged cells don't get fixed, they will continue to make more damaged cells that will go down that path to cancer cells, right? Okay. So the surveillance system, these people who have a genetic disorder were born without the surveillance system. It doesn't work, it never did, all right? Figuring out which genetic defect they have is like placing the Sioux Falls phone book in your lap and saying, there's a misspelled word in this book, find, find it. it. Okay, yeah. that's why that costs $3,000. But when we have a woman who has all those risk factors, under age 45, multiple family members, and she has a breast cancer, she's more likely to have that genetic defect. If she has that, then we look for that only that genetic defect in her family members. Because right. she, she, they don't share a different genetic defect, they only share the one that she has. So then that genetic defect cost to test for that for those family members is about three to four hundred dollars. Oh, because, because you we're know, you're looking for one specific Correct. Oh. Correct. So that's why we don't just test everybody. Well, good. I'm glad you learned something today. Yeah. Well, we don't test everybody who has breast cancer for a genetic defect. They have to be at that high risk. And then if they're negative, all I can tell them is they did not inherit a genetic defect from their mother or their father. Okay. But I can't tell them about their sister and I can't tell them about their mother because mm -hmm. we didn't test them. Right. A man from Sioux Falls asks, are there other methods of determining if prostate cancer has spread instead of biopsies? 
Uh, we can do CAT scans and PET scans because those, those will also light up because there's increased activity from those cancer cells and those become hot spots on a body scan. You know, there's been some epidemiologic data that suggests that rectal exams are not impro uh, important. There's some uh, for prostate cancer screening. I disagree. Mm -hmm. There is also, but I'm an old doctor and I've done a lot of rectal exams on guys and I've found a bunch of prostate cancer in that. Yeah. The other is the, um, the PSA test for prostate cancer. And there's some argument that that is a crappy test because it will be elevated in some people who don't have cancer and it won't be elevated in people who yeah. have who have cancer and I agree it's not a great test mm -hmm. I'd rather just do the rectal exam the biopsies is another story and I think this person was concerned about biopsies I think the answer is I don't know I don't think the biopsy of the prostate is a pleasant experience. No, but if, let's face it, your urologist doesn't want to do a biopsy of your prostate unless you have some problems with it. <laughs> they're, they're yeah. not, they, they really don't want to do that. That's not something that I think they jump up and down about. Yeah. So if your urologist is recommending that you have a biopsy of your prostate because there's some issues, I, do I don't think there's any way you can get around. No. And the thing is, is you really, I, I thought there was more about the, uh, 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 for metastatic disease yeah. that you asked me that question. But the only way they're going to know, and they want to know the kind of cells that those are. If they're if white. If they're aggressive. Yeah. Or if they're well behaved, because there are some aggressive prostate cancers, and yeah. then there are some uh, uh, well behaved prostate yeah. cancers. So the only way you're going to know that is by taking that tissue core. There you go. We have another question about uh, tender breasts. Uh, oh, yes. What, what, what's your comment of, mm. you know, is vitamin E helpful? They say vitamin E is that rose hips are, that, uh, what else is it? Uh, the whole thing about staying away from coffee, coffee I have Doesn't to say, work. stop. That was a study that was done in the 1970s. It never has had been, it, the results have never been reproduced. So, so if, if, if drink you feel, your coffee. Please, oh my gosh, <laughs> telling someone not to drink their coffee, that's like, that's terrible, that's torture. Yeah. <laughs> so that really, but what I do. You must be Scandinavian of some kind. <laughs> I know. But what I do, so I think there's something about, especially for women who are in the reproductive years, the hormones will cause increased fluctuations in the breast fluid, in, in the fluid in the breast. Mm -hmm. And so they get swollen, they get sore, and then those hormones go down, and then they're fine again. And then right before their period, they get swollen and sore. So what I tell them is get in some kind of compression. Like I put them in um, a real tight spandex. Um, bra, a running not, bra. Not a running bra, but a camisole. Camisole. The one that goes from here all the way down. And because it gives you support, all it's like wearing support stockings for your chest. And what that does is when you're when you get out of your bra at night, if you're getting out of your bra at night and you're going, oh, they hurt, that's because you've taken away the support and now that fluid is flowing back into the breast yeah. and it's causing tenderness. You put on a support stocking to your to your chest wall and that pushes all that fluid back up through the lymph nodes and back into the system where it has to go. Right? What if you get really hot? I tell everybody fold it up and you have two support systems here yeah. and so then it, and you have to get that really nice a nicer camisole so for my patients who get that tenderness which is really a bear i yeah. when i had it back yes. in my 40s when that and I, I i know how that feels and that support really helped a lot right i i deal with uh, a lot of people who have swollen legs yes and you know when you're when you're reducing the swelling it hurts and they're That's not true. happy with you, and they don't. They'll hang their legs down, oh. and and it worsens the problem. And it, it, it so when you can get it down, can you get the swelling down finally? Mm -hmm. Keep it down with the support hose, and you'll have less problems. So it's yeah. there. See, I could understand one little com, uh, component of this breast mm -hmm. cancer discussion that we're having. <laughs> breast disease. Breast disease. Well, I think that does it for for tonight. Thank you for joining us uh, on our Facebook page. We appreciate all your questions and the opportunity to answer them. So until next time, from all of us at On Call with the Prairie Doc, stay healthy out there, people.